Hello, I am Jeff Wilber, and welcome to another one of Smart Packager's online tutorials. Today we're going to discuss setting up a discovery machine. This video will act as a quick start guide to assemble a discovery environment. We will start with the recommendations for a discovery machine, such as what virtual machine environments can be used, uh, why we require a clean and quiet environment, and what do we mean and how do we define a clean and quiet environment. We'll discuss what prerequisites should be installed, what configurations can be set, and what snapshots should be taken in your virtual environment. We'll also discuss the added ability of testing packages in your Discover environment. It is immensely important to have a clean and quiet environment. This is defined as a machine patched with the latest Microsoft updates, but with no other applications installed. This is to avoid background noise that will inadvertently be picked up as junk in your package. Unrelated junk can cause major issues with both the package and the target machine's operating system. A virtual infrastructure is recommended. The reason is this environment can be set up ideally and quickly reverted back to the pristine state using snapshots. It is recommended to have a virtual machine for each of the workstations in your environment. Examples would be a Windows Professional 64-bit and a separate Windows XP 32-bit. Any virtualization platform should work. Scalable recommends VMware Workstation, ESX, Microsoft Hyper-V, or the free version of Oracle VirtualBox. For this video, we will be using the free version of Oracle VirtualBox. Let's open up the Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. These steps should be very similar no matter which virtual infrastructure you choose. Uh, we are going to create a new Windows 7 64-bit machine that we can use as our Discover environment. First, select New. From here, uh, give it a name, in this case, Discovery. And our version is going to be Windows 7 64-bit. We can press Next. Uh, I recommend giving it a bit more than 512 megabytes of RAM. Uh, two or three gigabytes should suffice. I'm going to go to the three gigabytes. We'll press Next. Uh, I recommend the defaults for the hard drive. In this case, the default is to create a new virtual hard drive at 25 gigs. That should be fine. The hard drive doesn't have to be too large. It just has to house the one application that we want to discover. We'll click Create. And again, I suggest sticking with the, uh, the defaults. In this case, the default is a VDI virtual box desk image. I can press Next. Uh, and again, defaults for dynamically allocated are fine. And then here we can go ahead and create. Now, some of the settings I like to change, and, and this would go across all platforms, is I prefer for my network, instead of NAT, I like bridged. That way I have a separate IP address for my virtual machines. Uh, the other thing is that we want to add in the Windows 7 ISO file to the CD-ROM drive or the virtual CD-ROM drive. For VirtualBox, this can be done by clicking on Storage, going to the IDE controller, and then adding a ISO file. In this case, I will go to where I have my Windows 7 64-bit ISO file. I can hit OK, and at this point I can press Start and then go through the general Windows setup that you would normally find. Let's go ahead and open up our newly created machine. The first thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and install the latest Microsoft updates to your Discover machine. Uh, this can be done simply by running Windows Update or an on-premise WSUS server. Uh, the updates aren't necessarily needed for our Discover process, but it's always a good idea to have your Windows machines patched with the latest security patches. Uh, the next thing that I recommend is to join the computer to the domain. Uh, you can see here that uh, this Discover machine, or this virtual machine, is part of my austin.int domain. Uh, what this does is it really helps uh, accessing the resources that are located on my network. I don't have to authenticate from time to time. I can just open up UNC paths. Uh, after that, the only real prerequisite that we have is Microsoft.net. Uh, we cannot yet include .NET automatically as a dependency, similar to how we can include the runtime environments. Uh, 
and the discovery of .NET will result in a bad package. The current recommendation is to install Microsoft.NET on the workstation as a prerequisite. This way we can ensure it will not be picked up by the discovery process as it will already be installed on the machine. So before we get started and before we take our first snapshot, let's go ahead and install Microsoft.NET 4.5. And there's nothing special about this install, we're just going to go through the defaults. Okay, with a little bit of editing magic, you can see that our install of .NET Framework 4.5.1 has been installed. And now we can move on to the install of our Smart Packager console. Next, we can install the Smart Packager itself. This is a fairly simple install. Just select the proper installer for your appropriate operating system, the x64 for a 64-bit, the x86 for a 32-bit, and so on. Once done, you can either double-click or right-click and select Install. This will bring up our install GUI. From here, we can say Next, uh, read through the end-user license agreement, and then accept the end-user license agreement. From here, we can press Next again, and then you want to select Smart Packager Pro for the type of install. We can press next again, enter in our information. I can enter in my information. See if I can be quick about this. And then my phone number. And then from here we can press next again. Now, we can either enter in a provided license key, or you can press the I do not have a license key, and a temporary one will be emailed to you. Okay, once the license key has been entered, we can press the install button, and the program will then install. One convenient option to set is the default package location. By default, the Smart Packager will create packages and store them on the local hard drive of the virtual environment. Uh, this could be not good if you revert before you save the package. Uh, to uh, eliminate this risk, you can go into the Smart Packager console itself. Click on the monkey wrench in the top corner. And then from here, change your default package folder to a UNC share. Uh, as pictured here, I've set mine to my WinInstall Packages directory. Uh, this helps because the packages will be stored on a separate UNC path uh, and will not be affected by reverting to a snapshot. Now I can say OK here, and then when I want to discover a new package, which I can do by clicking on Discover a New Package, from here I can say Next. And then you'll notice in my output folder, it'll automatically be populated to my UNC share. I can type in Adobe Reader, and it will automatically be populated to my WinInstall Packages directory. Now, let's uh, step out of the full screen mode and see the management console again. Uh, we'll go ahead and close out of our package. And then on the Oracle, to take a snapshot, it is under the machine menu. I'm sure it's very similar for all of the other virtual environments, but we want to go ahead and take a snapshot. We'll label this, and uh, I'll label mine Discovery. From here, I can say OK, and uh, Virtual will go ahead and take a snapshot that I can revert to time and time again. Now, another benefit of virtual machines is that once the package has been created, we can quickly revert back to that clean state and use the same environment over and over again. We can also use that clean state for testing environments. We can revert back to this state, take the newly created package, and verify, in fact, the package will A, install, B, function correctly, and C, sometimes overlooked, uninstall. Uh, and we can do this without the risk of corrupting a physical workstation. Okay, now you should understand the recommendations for a Discover machine, why a clean and quiet machine is so important, what prerequisites you should install, what configurations you can take, and then what snapshots to create. You can also see the added benefit of testing your discovered packages on your virtual machines.
Uh, I thank you much for your time. Uh, please visit us at ScalableSmartPackager.com and you can always reach us at 512-501-2828.